At this point, I would like to... Yeah, we, we skipped four. I thought we did three. We skipped four. We went... We went on to number five. Uh, we have Stan the weightlifter, so let's uh, see if we can draw Stan the weightlifter here. Okay, there he is. Yeah. So we got uh, Stan the weightlifter. He lifts a mass of, let's see, the mass of the barbell is 200 kilograms, and he lifts it over his head on earth. Um, 200 kilograms is how many pounds? Two thousand newtons, but it would be how many pounds? Four hundred forty. We we take our new our, our kilograms and multiply times two point two. It's four hundred and forty pounds. Yeah. All right. So so that's that's all right. Now let's say, guys that the weight that he would have to lift on the sun is equal to the mass of the barbells times the acceleration due to gravity on the sun. Okay, again, I still have people saying that, that G is gravity, but G is not gravity. Okay, G is an acceleration. That's why it's in the equation F equals MA. It's just a specific acceleration. It's 9.8 for Earth, okay, or 10. Um, so in this case, we have the force of gravity, the weight of the barbells on the sun is the mass of the barbells times the acceleration due to gravity. So we're going to take the 200 kilograms and multiply by what they've told us G is, right? Isn't that something like 300 meters per second squared? Which is 30 times the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, right? The acceleration due to gravity on Earth, if we replace this, would be 10 instead of 300, right? So it's 30 times greater. Now, what does that mean? That means that this 2,000 Newton barbell, okay, if we deal with the FG in this case, that the weight of this barbell is equal to 6 D thousand Newtons. Now, that doesn't mean anything to you at this point, I'm sure. 60,000 newtons is a big number, and it's a mathematical number, and you guys aren't thinking about what newtons actually are. But realistically, think about this. If the acceleration due to gravity on the sun is 30 times the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, then let's say that we could ship you to the sun and give you, like, industrial strength sunblock so you don't burn, and let's make the surface of the sun solid so that you don't fall through it because right now it's plasma. Okay. Let's suggest that you could stand on the surface of the sun and not burn up. You would weigh 30 times what you weigh right now. That you would feel like you had 30 people, well, 29 people, sitting on your shoulders. Okay? It would be like having a giant pig pile and you're on the bottom. Okay? And then not, yeah, try, trying to move at all. You would probably not survive it very well. Yeah? All right. So here's this, uh, here's this first pro problem. We deal with the next problem. The next problem deals with a baseball. Now, we have a baseball, and it is going to be accelerated, okay, using a baseball bat. So here's my baseball bat that goes off towards the end of the bat, okay? There's my baseball bat. It's swinging like in this. Okay, hits the baseball, and the baseball is going to change directions, yes? You like that? Okay, so, so in the meantime, we've got this baseball bat swinging in a baseball, right? The ball is going to eventually change direction and go in the other direction. Do we agree? All right, so thank you. Thank you. Let's go on to the problem now. Okay, uh, we know the mass of the ball is a 0.5 kilogram ball. We know the force, does it say, or does it tell tells us the acceleration? Ooh, the mass of the ball is 0.5, but the acceleration of the ball is three times ten to the fourth meters per second squared. Yike! 
What does that number actually look like? Three, three times what? One, it's not 1,000. 10,000. OK. And what's 3 times 10,000? 30,000 meters per second squared. <coughs> Pardon me. Ladies and gentlemen, does that mean that that, that baseball is going 30,000 meters per second? No. Can I tell you that 300, roughly 300 meters per second, is the speed of sound? Is this thing going 100 times the speed of sound? I hope not. OK? 100 times the speed of sound is not something that we do. OK? And I, I, I certainly don't do that. Light does it all the time, but I definitely don't. Hold on, hold on. Let's stand a, an appreciable distance away. You will hear the sound after you see the light. Okay, we'll talk about that in chapter 25. That's the, is it has to, when it hits that bat, it has to slow down and then speed up and up. Uh, the ball has to slow down in one direction, okay? It has to stop, and then it has to change directions, and then it has to speed up in the opposite direction. So it's constantly accelerating. Now, don't worry about it. <laughs> so what we have here is this ball that is going to slow down, change direction, and then speed up. So it's accelerating the entire time. Now. Is this bat in contact with the ball for a full one second? When you watch a baseball game and you see the bat, the ball come in and the bat swings around and hits the ball, can you count 1,001 while they're in contact? Absolutely not. They're in contact for a very, very small amount of time. We recognize that acceleration is a change in velocity over time, yes? What happens if the denominator of a number is really tiny? Then, then we get bigger and bigger for our acceleration in this case. right? If I had 100 and I divide by 0.1, I'd get 1,000. If I divide by 0.01, I would get 10,000, and so on and so forth. So you can actually get changes in velocity divided by really tiny time intervals that make enormous accelerations. So now when we have F equals M times A, do what? Vacuum? No. no. They get shot down the hall on a tube by an air blower. Um, that's not what that sound is. All right. 0.5 times 10 to the f can You want to watch them vacuum? Yeah. All right. Here he goes, vacuuming. I don't see us vacuuming. Uh, 0.5 times 3 times 10 to the fourth. What is this? This is going to be an interesting question. What's half of 3 times 10 to the fourth? And that's Newton's. The, the answer is, you want to say 1.5 times 10 to the second because you want to make this half. But this is 30,000, and half of 30,000 is 15,000. You don't actually change the exponent. All right, so still, still a lot of force on that ball. Uh, the next one, where we're dealing with, uh, in this case, Claudia stubs her toe on the furniture. Nobody likes that one. Yeah, that's the difference between their class and our class, is that they actually do have fun. We, we just don't. Because I don't like you guys. Um, all right, so here's a coffee table. There's a stubbing of a toe there. Um, we, we hate this. We know that the force that Claudia exerts on the table is 100 newtons of force. My, my question, is that, is, that is that the reason that Claudia's foot hurts? Because she kicks the table? No. All right. So what ends up happening is we also have the force of the table acting on Claudia 
And that's also 100 newtons. That's, that's something to be thinking about when we start dealing with Newton's third law, okay? That, that we're going to have equal and opposite forces. If Claudia kicks the table, the table kicks Claudia. And, and it's not like it reaches its little leg out there and kicks her. It actually just exerts the same amount of force back on her. All right, here we go. <coughs> now, we're dealing with the accelerations in this case. The acceleration of Claudia's foot, in this case, is the force on the table divided by um, the mass of her foot. So 100 newtons divided by 1.8 kilograms. And that should give me something like, what, 55 meters per second squared? Yeah? As opposed to when we do the acceleration of the table, which is the force uh, on the table divided by the mass of the table, and if we do that, we're going to get the 100 newtons, there's also newtons, 100 newtons divided by the mass of the table, which is 20 kilograms. That's an enormous coffee table. I just want you to know. Right? 20, 20, 20 kilograms is, is what? 44 pounds. That's, that's a pretty big, pretty big coffee table. Uh, and that gives me 5 meters per second squared as an acceleration, okay? The difference in the accelerations is actually the reason for the pain, right? If we did this the opposite way, if, this, if the table were made out of styrofoam instead, her foot would have a lower acceleration than the table's acceleration. It wouldn't slow down as much. It wouldn't hurt as much. What we're eventually going to find, guys, what we're eventually going to find is that um, things like when we, when we have collisions between two objects like a bee and, let's say, a, a, a car, right? Let's say a, a bee slams into a car windshield. Um, you guys seem to think that the car can push harder on the bee than the bee pushes on the car, but it's the same amount of force. It's the same amount of force, just the bee experiences a greater acceleration. That's why it, uh, it has so many problems. What's that? How about a hovercraft in a wall? I don't know. We'd have to uh, we'd have to test that one. <laughs> if we actually did that kind of thing. <laughs>